All right, folks, I'm sorry that it took so long. Oh, my gosh. So many days to do it, but then the new status quo is screwing me over. Anyways, here we go. Sorry, I haven't had to do it all the way to Saturday. Hopefully, it's posted on Saturday. If not, I'm just going to punch myself in the face while I do this. But anyways, yes, we are back to talk about episode five of FLCL Progressive. And it is none other called than Fool on the Planet. So, we're back. It's dream sequence time. Yeah, you would figure it's like, oh, well, you're lo you wrong. And that looks like, nope, it might have just been for that fourth episode. Anyways, <laughs> fourth and fifth episode. So, it's a different style, which they did that before. They did that in the first series. So, why not do it again? But this time, they did it a little bit different. Right now, they actually did a kind of painting style. So, she's dreaming. Of course, the girl is in there. It's her. And she's kind of playing Operation, just making sure that you guys can watch it and not actually be like, oh, well, gosh, she totals everything, frick you. But, yeah, anyways, she's playing Operation, and the music is playing as if a Walkman is playing it. It storms, it washes everything away. I think it actually showed the robot. You remember the one from the first season, right? Yeah, um, they showed the robot, and I guess we got to see what exactly happened to him. I'm not sure. And of course, while well, the girl is floating in the water, then she actually smiling, walking or running on the beach. Of course, it's a dream. So we get to what's going on now. FLCL is sitting on the roller coaster track. She's sitting up there up high on the roller coaster track. And she is fat as hell. Previously, for people who don't really actually know, which of course you should be knowing this, you're watching this for a reason. Hopefully it's for the reason of you're watching all of them. So, previous episode, she actually ate Julia, a.k.a. FLCL number two. And, well, now she's suffering the consequences. For people who know Men in Black 2, think of it like that. Where you have Celine. And Celine came as a little alien. And then she looked at a some kind of magazine. She decided to become a kind of model looking girl and then she's like mm, i'm hungry and she eats a homeless person and as soon as we see her again she's like she got a bulge man she's fat as hell that doesn't look attractive at all luckily flco could pull it off but saline couldn't and that's exactly what we're dealing with and then we see her bracelet is her brace is actually chiming means that he is near the guy, well, we go back to the guy the guy who gets freaking screwed over by Ico, aka we can just say it's his it's her brother, I guess. We don't really know for sure. Yeah, it's like, yeah, when it comes to that situation, it's like, I really hope Aiko is your sister. Because if she, you're giving her a ride in your freaking house. And she's stealing shit. Just so she can incantation sell it. It's like, dude. We need to kick her the hell out of there. I really hope she's your sister. I really hope so. So anyways, the guy with the hat and red hair, we know he notices that the satellite is up. The old man is there too. Aiko is overlooking and listening in secret what they're saying. And, well, it looks like the day's the day to get rid of that damn robot carcass. <laughs> so that's what they're doing now is getting rid of the robot carcass and saying, yep, we need to get rid of it. And they got rid of it in... Uzu, yeah, Uzu City. So anyways, yeah, we now go into Ide and the kids, the students at school. Skirt Boy, a.k.a. Mori, is trying to get him to go to the theme park with him, with Aiko, so he can ask Aiko, and I guess most likely he'll get Hidomi to come with him. So, yeah, he lies about Aiko saying Aiko's the one who actually is like, yeah, please, please let's go to the theme park together yeah luckily for him well it kind of sucks it's like dude you should just tell your friends it's, i don't know i don't know man at least marco isn't there to actually scoff at him saying my gosh <laughs> yeah <laughs> he is missing you we'll talk about where he is in a moment so anyways Ide actually has eyes on idomi and not really caring what mori has to say FLCL just bursts in, rides in, and she's saying, yeah, I'm quitting t being your teacher. I'm getting married. I'm going to be a housewife. And then she tells the story of how she met the Pirate King, but of course she just said husband. And of course it's fabricated just so they can actually get inspired to go to the freaking damn amusement park. Hidomi is still in the classroom while everyone just goes out. And of course, 
Ide is still there too. So FOCL tries to get an understanding on her, trying to actually get Ide to, I mean, Hidomi to go. Go to the theme park. Go. I'm interested in you to go into the theme park. And Ide actually gets FOCL Haruko alone. It's like, I need to talk to you. They go to the pool, and then it's Ide versus FLCL. Sorta. Sorta. Luckily for him, Ide actually still has Julia's guitar, and now he's trying to freaking wail her on it, trying to take her out. And, well, she actually made him, she's blocked all his freaking hits with just her foot. With just her freaking foot. And she does that a few times. And then he tries again. And this time she's now up. And she's dodging every single freaking hit. That she's trying to land on her. And of course he got one punch in. Luckily. He got one punch in. And well, actually he dodged, she dodged a little bit. She got one punch in. Hidomi's like okay enough playing. And he just froze the freaking. I mean, Ide throws his freaking coat away. Idomi overhears the noise before he does it. And then FLCL gives him a lesson. It's like, hmm, you need to square up your shoulders, put your back, and then swing. And he's like, no, I'm not going to listen to your freaking damn crap. And he tries to beat her up a little bit more. And sadly, it fails. He can't freaking fight her. So she calls him a loser and said, hey... All this stuff I put into you, all this time I put into you, I thought you were the one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh crap, she's giving him the Obi-Wan Kenobi speech <laughs> to Anakin. I thought you were one high ground. <laughs> yeah, but not the high ground though. She straight up freaking just says you're a damn loser. And I thought you were a good choice, but apparently I was wrong. And she was about to walk away. And... Well, Hidomi is about to come. Yeah, she's now running to them. And Ida actually says, you know what? I got something to tell you. You don't satisfy me at all. Look at everything. Mm -mm. I'm not even interested. And then all of a sudden, she puts on her charm and she's going for it. <laughs> Hidomi walks in at the bad time while she is on top of him. And you know what happens? Yep, it sets it off. Not even releasing a monster. Instead, she absorbs Ide in her mind, I think. It's either that or she turns him into a sponge. That's the thing that I don't really understand. And this is a good time to actually be like, hey, we know what happened. Put it down below in the description. Other than that, I don't freaking damn know. But I can tell you one thing. If a girl puts me into her mind saying, you're all mine, I personally don't want to do that. Especially we see what happens in her dreams. I'm pretty sure we we don't want to be E-Day right now being absorbed into her mind because, oh, sh yeah, she, she, oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, FLCL drive slash flies away. Yep. Now we go after a commercial break. The students are rushing to the park. Couples are getting a discount. Mori is all alone and crying for it. And he's like, where are you, Aiko? And I'm, it's weird. It's like, you would figure Aiko actually wants the damn money. Does Mori has the money for it? And if so, then why the hell is she still at home right now? <laughs> bad for a businesswoman. Yep, totally bad. But anyways, we get to see a love triangle happen. It eventually got stopped, and then they're all getting headaches. And then we know where Marco is. Marco is still at the freaking damn amusement park. That's right. So after him getting <laughs> screwed over with that, <laughs> that ride, and he got screwed over with a monster, he somehow got freaking taken back to the amusement park instead of going to the hospital or something, and has been held captive for all this time. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It turns out that the freaking dude, he, he kept him there. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Even Ide's job is like, hey, you're a student. Go, 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 go to school. You'll work as soon as you come back home. Marco, however, apparently the dude doesn't even care he has school. He's like, no, you stay here, man. You're going to continue doing this experiment. It's like, Marco better be paid freaking damn well. So anyways, the guy, an old man, talks to the guy at the park. And 
there's a funny process to get to him and you talk to him by technology and well we'll just nickname him Mr. Dodo then so Mr. Dodo he actually wonders about the plant that I go freaking damn sold which is a dumbass move again and I don't even know where the hell the plant is is it still over there by the freaking satellite anyways I go over here's the whole entire thing and apparently she's saving up by a jack-in-a-box I mean jack-o'-lantern like bank actually is a jack-o'-lantern it's just a she's just putting her money there and of course well the guy maybe her brother is confronting her i'm not sure if she he's actually confronting her saying okay well things are being missing and you're the only person here besides the old man and the old man only cares about freaking getting fighters you know he's basically the rocky balboa now so you're the only person here that's your that is that we don't know if you're taking crap and if you're taking crap all we want is the damn freaking damn plant I kind of want the beaver too, but we want the damn plant. <laughs> it's like most likely she's going to get confronted eventually. So Ide's thirsty. Apparently, yeah, I think he might be a sponge or part sponge. And Hidomi decides to get herself wet for him. Yeah, uh, that sounds messed up. I know that sounds messed up. But basically, there's a shower over there. And, tsh, and instead of being like just throw him to the floor, allowing him to inflate, she actually carries him. And then, tsh. so. <sighs> We get a little flashback that we get GU, a.k.a. FLCO number two. She apparently, in quotations, apparently gave the mom plates to replace all the ones that she broke, which I doubt. I doubt it. And the mom noticed that he Hidomi actually changed. Different art style as well done here. We get the manga version, which that happened. I think that happened already in the series and, of course, in the previous series. It did happen at one time. That was pretty damn funny. So it turns out that the real realization here is that the mom is closing the cafe. And apparently the cafe has been open just because of the dad. The dad might be coming back. And as soon as he comes back, he's able to start the cafe and continue the cafe. But since it's getting closed, that kind of ruins the hopes of Hidomi. Which has to now deal with the emotions that she feels since, you know, the headphones came off and then came back on. So the sponge floats away. It floats into space. Hidomi all of a sudden is doing something weird. Yeah, the usual weirdness of where she might be conjuring a monster or some kind of crap. Technically, she's doing what she did in the first episode. I think so. Yeah, sadly, she's not turning into the robot. Frig it, damn it. So anyways, Mr. Dodo has an army. And he shoots. He gets the army to shoot the freaking kids. The students and everyone in that freaking amusement park are getting shot at. And apparently they're extracting emotions to power the rides. FLCL is noticing all of it. Because she's there. All the rides are becoming fighting machines. And apparently this is a rush job. they actually supposed to wait a few more days. You know. Because one of the biggest rides is like at 64%. So yeah. They all fire at the satellite. The satellite is like Boo. He re It regenerated. And then all of a sudden it fires right back. Like I said the sponge actually went into space. Apparently immigration control center. Which is I think the lost and found center as well. So they grabbed it and stored it. In quotation stored it. And we see the robot. The robot is back. But the robot is now an in training Digimon I guess. You know, it's like if this is Digimon. Freak you you bastard. <laughs> Sorry guys. Stupid damn pl ready player one <laughs> commercial game. And the bastard came on there. But anyways. I think if he was like maybe let's just say that his original form we saw in episode season one was his champion level or maybe rookie level. Then we get to see he he's now small. He's a dog like person. So like the in training form in Digimon, that's what kind of happened now. So now he's a freaking little dog. Maybe he'll evolve. Digivolve. Who knows? Anyways, the freaking Sponge is back in smaller form, and I think the dog actually got fed it. So, yeah, the robot got fed the, a piece of the sponge, or all the sponge. So, anyways, FLCLC's Hidomi. Hidomi is freaky looking. She has a robotic arm now. Her eyes completely weird, and is now FLCL versus Hidomi. 
And what she really wants is just E-Day to come back. She wants E-Day back. And it's kind of funny. How it's just it's a it's an interesting fight. Some funny stuff too. Basically, we got the whole oh you're gonna marry a weird bird and you're just a stupid girl in love. It's like oh damn. And eventually the fight stopped because he's here. Yep, just like the first season. <laughs> yeah, but a little bit different though. A little bit different. But it's like the first season. So that's where they left us off. All right, man. Well, at least the good news is that <laughs> whoever is at school, they don't have to deal with Haruko anymore because, holy frick, man, I mean, she did a lot of freaking damn crap. She showed kids pornography. I'm pretty sure even in the Japanese culture, that's something that's a total no-no. I kind of think that's a total no-no. So for any way how they, she actually got the certificate to be a teacher, it's like, holy frick, man. I mean, hopefully we... And sadly for us in America, um, I can't really say, oh, hopefully we have something that actually stops that. Uh, damn. <laughs> He's like, yeah, still we got teachers that kind of actually do something to kids. And it's really messed up where I'm like, oh, fuck, I can't say that crap. <laughs> I can't say that crap at all. But yeah, that this episode, man, this episode is something. <laughs> that's that's the real thing. It's like this episode something. Man, someone needs to call freaking Marco's parents because Marco has most likely been kidnapped. I call this kidnapping right now or hostage situation. Mori, Mori's a bastard. Aiko's a bastard. They're made for each other. She doesn't even need to pay him. She doesn't even need to get paid by him to be together. Oh, man. Hopefully, e -Day's okay. So, hopefully, I am back to normal. In quotations, back to normal. Hopefully, I'm able to actually make the video for Tuesday or Thursday. And if so, thank goodness. If I don't, my gosh, I'm going to punch myself in the face even harder. Thank you for watching, folks. And make sure if you like this, make sure if you didn't see the other ones, watch the other ones. And watch this series because I don't tell you everything. Woo. Man, what a crazy episode. Everybody say, everybody say I'm a crazy man.